In this video, we're going to look at confidence intervals for a population mean and how we construct them when we know the standard deviation. We're going to explain what it means, this definition of a confidence level, and define a margin of error for a calculated what I'm going to need for, for the needed n. So consider this example. From a bag of pennies, I'm going to select 5 at random, and so n is 5, and find the average age, which will be x bar. I know the population standard deviation sigma is 5.803. Now, I, it's rare that I actually know it, but we're going to use that for this particular scenario. I want to construct a 68% confidence interval. Well, what does that as actually mean? Well, I want to find out for my value, what's the confidence that it'll be in, in the interval that I have to be 68%? Well, that means my standard normal curve has to be between well, if I think about my normal curve, right, here's my normal curve, here's my zero stand mean, and then my standard deviation of 1 to negative 1. And typically, well, not typically, this is 68%. And now, that's just a really good estimate. So let's calculate actually what this z score is going to be, because it's not actually equal to negative 1 and 1. Let's use our calculator to find out what it really is. So if I'm going to go second distributions, I'm going to go inverse normal. The area of this part here is 16% because it's 34 and 34. And so I can just use 16% on that lower unshaded area. And when I do that, I get negative 0 0.9945 and a positive 0 0.9945 when I round this off. And so that is where Z belongs between these two values, a negative and a positive of this 9945. Well, if I think about the de uh, derivation of this, so z though, I know that z is just x bar minus mu, and this is the average of my sample over sigma over the square root of n less than positive 0 0.994. So I'm going to multiply both sides, or everything, by sigma over root n, and then subtract x bar. And so when I do that, I'm going to get negative x bar minus 0 0.9945 sigma root n, less than negative mu, less than x bar negative plus 0 0.9945 sigma over root n. Well, I know I have a negative mu, so I multiply everything by negative, switches this around, and so this here becomes positive negative, positive positive, they switch sides, and so I can say that x bar minus 0 0.9945 sigma root n is less than mu, less than x bar minus, or sorry, plus 0 0.9945 sigma over root n. And so what this says is that mu is going to be between this calculation and this calculation. And if I look at my formula book, what it'll say, it will say this. It will say the mean with a known variance is x bar plus or minus z times sigma over root n. And this here is z. And I usually like to refer to it as z star because it refers to specifically the z for this particular confidence level. And so this value here can change depending upon if I want it to be 68% or 90% or 95%. So let's actually do this example now. Let's calculate a confidence interval. To do so, let us actually go to a bag of pennies and select five at random to find the average age. So here we go. We have a bag of pennies here, and I will magically pull out five pennies. And from these five pennies, I have these ages here, 2013, 2009, 2015, 2010, and 1972. If I calculate the average, I know the average I did earlier is 2005 exactly, which surprised me, but it happens to be exactly that. And so what I'm going to do then 
is I'm going to come along over here and I'm going to figure out my confidence interval. Well, I know my confidence interval of 60% is going to be 2005 plus or minus Z star, which we remember is plus or minus 0 0.9945 times sigma is given to me as this value times 5.803 over the square root of 5 because my sample was 5. And when I do this calculation, oh, 2005, so that'll be actually minus times 5.803 divided by the square root of, I get 2,000. This is equal to 2,000 and 2.4 comma, and if I do the other version of it, let's do, oh, I actually want to add it, plus it to make it the bigger sign, and I get 2,000, 2,007.6. Okay, so here is my mean is in the middle between those two. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a number line here and I'm going to take this particular sample and I'm going to plot it here. So I'm going to say here was 2005. 2002 is roughly here. 2002 is here. 2007.6 is roughly here. 2002.4, I'm going to adapt it just a little bit, move it over. It'll be approximately here. And this here is my confidence interval. And so I'm 68% confidence that the true mean of this bag of pennies, true mean of the age of pennies, is somewhere in this interval here. And so let's do a bunch of different samples and construct a bunch of different confidence intervals and let's see what we have. I'll magically come up with them and you can see what they are. So I've done it 10 times. You can see magically they've all appeared. And these are all my different confidence intervals calculated the exact same way. And so I want to get back to this idea of the 68% confidence level. Well, little known to you, but known to me, is I've secretly found the the actual true population's average of all those pennies. And if I do that, I find out the average age is 2005.6. And so this is the true value of the population. Now this is rarely ever known, but what the confidence level means is we are 68% confident that this particular method of taking a random sample of five and finding the confidence interval, we are 68% confident that this mean that we've calculated, this X bar here, this X bar, and then the confidence interval included, it captures the true value of the population mean, the mu, it captures it 68% of the time. That is what we are confident of. And so we know that I, if I look at this, I here's captured, no captured, captured, no captured, 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 no captured, captured, and captured. And so of these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, I have 7 out of 10, which is approximately 70%, which is approximately 68% of the confidence interval captured the true value. So when you create a confidence interval, you never know whether at, whether the true mean mu is inside the interval or not. But you are confident with the method 68% of the time, or maybe it's 90% of the time, depending upon what your confidence level is. And that's what this level means. It is a confidence in the procedure. So if my confidence level is, let's say, 90%, then I am 90% confident that my procedure of calculated confidence interval, 90% of those in those intervals will capture the true value of 
the population mean? So 90% will capture the true value of the population mean of these confidence intervals. So when I create a confidence interval, I never actually know whether it captured or not. It's just the confidence in the actual procedure. So then what actually happens to this confidence interval if I would come along and then make a 90% confidence? What's going to happen to my interval? Or if it's 95%? Well, think about what that actually means. If you want to be more sure of capturing the true value, what effect is that going to have on this? And if I also think about it, the calculation, if I, right, my calculation, the only thing that's going to change is Z star. And if I do a 90% confidence interval, if I go to my calculator and if I do my inverse normal for 90%, which means I really have 0 0.05 on each tail, this value is larger which means my confidence interval, if I was going to do 90 versus confidence interval, the confidence interval is going to be larger. It's going to be larger, something like this. And so you're more sure of capturing the true value. If it's 95%, it'll be even more. And if I use my calculator, I can actually calculate a confidence level. Watch and see what I do. If I go statistics, and I'm going to go to tests, and if I go to Z interval, now there's lots of different tests and we're going to learn what a lot of them do. But if I do Z interval, and I'm going to put in data, and my mean is 5.803. Oh, sorry, I'm not going to do data. I'm going to do statistics. I'm going to tell you the statistics. My mean is 5.083. My X bar, well, let's say it was 2005 again. My sample is n, and let's do a 90% confidence interval. And so if I do that calculation, I now extend this line from 2000, and now this green line was just a guess, but it's actually going to go from 2000.7, so from here to 2009.3 to here. So this is a 90% confidence interval. And so the confidence gets you're more confident, but the interval gets larger. And so 95 would be even larger. But that's a, you, if you want, that's good and bad, right? The larger the confidence level, the bigger the interval is. And so eventually it gets worthwhile, worthless. And so it's a bit of give and take. Your only control that you have is N. If you make N bigger, which makes this calculation is going to end up being smaller, and so you're going to have a smaller confidence interval. Now, we have this idea called a margin of error. If I look at my calculation here, when I look at, let's say, this particular confidence interval, here was my x bar, or I maybe I'll use let me clean this up a little bit here. Oh, that was too much cleaning up. So if I get rid of the green, let's get rid of the green one. And okay, so here, here was my original one, and I had a mean of 2005. Well, my, comp, my margin of error is this part of the calculation. That's what margin of error means. It's x bar plus this margin of error, so this value here, that's margin of error, or minus it. So a confidence interval is really consists of two times the margin of error. And so in the calculation, I know that it's going, I know it's x bar plus or minus z star sigma over root n, so this is my margin of error. And so there's some theory on what a confidence interval is and what a confidence level means. 
and margin of error.